Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. We are gonna go through five ways to remove stuff in Photoshop. Before we kick this off, let me just remind you guys, please do press the subscribe button. It helps me out, helps you out, helps us all out, and that is awesome. So as part of Advent this year, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going through five ways to remove things in Photoshop. We're using my most used tools. Like everything in Photoshop, there's about 4,000 ways to do everything. I don't know if there is actually 4,000, but there can't be much less than 4,000. Um, so we're just gonna go through the five that I feel you guys will probably use the most. And I've just picked this picture of Bright to work on because I basically think we can get away with using all five in one shot. Usually I would definitely be using three of these in every single photo. So first things first, guys, when you're over in Photoshop, duplicate your background layer. Duplicate your background layer by pressing Command J. Any time in this video where I say command and you work on a Windows, just do control instead, works the same. So basically what this does is it gives you a background layer, which is kind of the safe layer, and then a layer that we're gonna be doing all of our changes on, just in case we need that background layer in the future. So I would recommend doing this, personally. Okay, so tool number one, tool number one that we're gonna go through today is the content aware fill, and somebody on a YouTube comment, which I will pop on the screen, taught me that there's a shortcut for this, which is just basically enriched my life. So you can use any of your selection methods, your marquees or your lassos, to select an area of the screen. So you can use a rectangular marquee tool, you can go ahead and use a polygon lasso tool to draw around objects, or you can, in like we're gonna do in this case, use the lasso tool. We're not gonna use the lasso tool, we're gonna use polygon lasso tool, and we're gonna just stay outside of the object that we're wanting to remove, like this. And remember, there's a reflection there. We're gonna go ahead and take out all of that. So double click to join them up, and when you've done that, all you need to do is do shift backspace, and then content aware fill comes up, click okay, and Photoshop will try and recreate that area. I mean, it didn't do a totally horrific job, actually. I sound surprised. I shouldn't be surprised by Photoshop these days. What I then do is go onto my normal marquee tool by pressing M and then clicking once, and that will deselect those pixels. So just like that, guys, we've removed the human from the shot. Now you guys might be saying, well, that's not a very good fill. Uh, actually, it's not bad but we're gonna go ahead and clean up. So uh, one of my favorite ways to clean up basically is using tool number two, which is the healing brush tool. The healing brush tool is not given enough credit in my opinion. It works like a brush, so you change the size of it and it works basically as an amalgamation of the clone stamp tool, the spot healing brush tool and the patch tool. So to use this tool basically, you need to select a source by holding down option on your keyboard. If you're working on a Windows, you're gonna to wanna to be holding down Alt. Then we click to select our source and with the source selected, we can then go ahead and fill in some pixels. So what that's doing basically is it's merging colors, it's merging patterns, and it's kind of doing all of them together to make a nice finish. So that's basically given us this here, which follows along this line on the floor. But what would you say we do for this? So these two have come from here, and this has come from here, and that's come from there, and it all just doesn't look right. Realistically, we need to correct this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull a source from here, which is the same focal plane, and I'm just gonna dust that in there. That's replaced this dot that was there. Now we need to take care of this. So I'm gonna pull from here, which is a similar focal plane, and I'm just gonna dust up there. Then, yes, you guessed it. I'm gonna probably pull from here and then just over that bit, which would just soften everything out. And now that floor area doesn't look totally ridiculous. In fact, it looks like it should be there. We could clone from here with our healing brush tool 
and just dust that line on out, which then makes it look absolutely like it's supposed to be there. And then there is just the original distraction, which was in beforehand of this. And to get rid of that, probably, probably I would just healing brush tool it out. Just like that, straightforward. You could, if you wanted to, join up those two lines together, which then would make it look a little bit more like it was supposed to be there. But you could just spend hours doing this, and honestly, guys, there's just no point. No one's going to look at pixel level at how neat your clone lines are. But if you wanted to, you could do nice, precise lines because it would make you feel better. That's fine. Still distracted. Still distracted. There we go. So we've now done the left hand side of the image. It's done a pretty good job. There's some bits that I might want to just go ahead and soften off in there. Um, but like I said, guys, no one is going to go into pixel level. So left hand side of the image I'm now happy with. Let's look at little B over here. So we've got a lead. There is a lead here and there is also a collar here and there's dust and stuff all over her face. So sticking with the tools that we've already used. Let's go ahead and do a healing brush all the way down. So let's pick a source that is on the diagonal. So therefore we can start here and go up and then down. And that will repair all the lines for us. And then now we are at little B's ear. How do we do this though? How do we do that? Well, let's go to the next tool. Let's go to the clone stamp tool. So with the clone stamp tool, what you can do is you can select a source point and then you can go ahead and just take a carbon copy of the pixels that are at that source point. So this is pulling pixels from here and it's basically copying them as a carbon copy. It doesn't always work perfectly. However, however, a fun little tip is that you can pick a source point. So this is the top of an ear. So we can pick a source point of the top of an ear, right? And we could put that there and that would look wrong. But if we go to window, go to clone source, and then press this little arrow here, that flips our clone. Can you see that? So it flips it. So we can line that up and then we've replaced the ear and you could do the side of the head if you wanted to, that's fine. And what that's done is that's given you a carbon copy of this side of the head, which just basically means you don't have to go in and clone super closely. So what we can then do is go back to our healing brush tool, take a source, maybe here. Let's take that up there. And then that looks like a normal bit of wall. So, can you see? So there's some little bits that I want to clean up here. It doesn't have to be super precise. Just a bit softer. Nobody is gonna know that a lead was taken out. So, let's clean up some dust on her face. So for this, for me, definitely go ahead and use the spot healing tool. Spot healing brush tool, sorry. And you just want to draw little straight lines. Little straight lines work better than dabs. And you just keep doing your little straight lines to clean up all of the dust and all of the muck. And if you've got a dog with a black face, you're gonna be doing this for a little bit longer than I'm gonna be doing this. Because honestly, guys, the dust is unreal. So, spot healing brush, I just cleaned up the face. Perfect. And let's say we've got these objects over here. I'm gonna go ahead and use a new tool, patch tool. Now the patch tool draws a circle and then you can click, drag and release. And it will pull the texture and the patterns from that area. So what this does is it's kind of great at removing distractions. It can leave harsh edges. So I would definitely suggest putting the diffusion up to seven. And then you can just go around ringing objects and replacing. Make sure you don't use this tool on the edge of an image because it doesn't usually do a pretty good job of making straight lines, but for larger distractions, it is brilliant. So that's the patch tool. Remember it pulls textures. So this little leaf is fine. So then the last thing really to remove 
is going to be this, which is the collar. So collar removal and lead removal is something that I've covered in previous tutorials, but for this one I would probably do a mixture of the clone stamp tool to just get us our lines. Remember to uncheck that flip. Don't want to leave that on. I would need to rotate this a little bit so you can rotate that in your clone source. I'm going to keep rotating. There we go. And that gives us a much better source point. I went too far. Let's do that again. And that gives you a much better source there. Same on the other side. Let's rotate the other way a little bit. A little bit more. And a little bit more. That's good. So I'm super close to these red bits of coat, so I have to be a little bit careful. But that is pretty good. And then you can go in a little bit smaller to fine tune. And then this bit here, this bit, I'm probably going to pull the ear. And I'm going to need to rotate a bit more. And that will fill that section like so. And then I can just go ahead and actually use the healing brush tool to fill in the central pattern with something that resembles a little bit more like a, kind of has like a little bit more to it in terms of the texture and the colors there. And then we just touch up. So I like touching up with a healing brush tool because it doesn't do kind of solid lines. It keeps things a little bit more textured, has a little bit more going through it, so therefore it looks more realistic. So this bit of coat here I lost because I did a boo-boo. So what we can do because we've got this background layer is we can pop a mask onto that layer, grab a brush, with a black brush because it's a white mask. You can then go ahead and bring back, soften that brush off a little bit, go ahead and bring back the original coat that was under there and blend those two in. And just like that, we've removed the distractions. So those are my five main tools to remove distractions. So we've got the patch tool, the spot healing brush tool, the healing brush tool, the clone stamp tool, and content aware fill. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, please do go ahead and press the subscribe button. I would love to have you on board and I will see you all again really, really, really soon.